Hello students, welcome to the lecture on depreciation. After this lecture, you will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the meaning of depreciation. Define the need for charging depreciation. Elaborate the factors affecting depreciation. Explain the methods of depreciation. Discuss the criteria for selecting the depreciation method. Now let us start with the concept of depreciation. In accounting, depreciation is defined as devaluation or permanent fall in the value of fixed assets arising due to passage of time, wear and tear, usage and technological progress. For an organization, depreciation is an expense which results from the use of fixed assets. An organization should report the depreciation in the financial statements accurately. Proper entry of depreciation in books of accounts helps in estimating the true net profits earned or losses suffered during an accounting period. Apart from this, depreciation also helps in the accumulation of funds by using depreciation fund method or insurance policy method. In depreciation fund method, a fund named depreciation fund or sinking fund is created. In this fund, the amount of depreciation goes on accumulating until the asset is completely depleted. Definition of depreciation Fixed assets are used by almost all the organizations to generate income for long term. As these assets are continuously used, their value keeps decreasing with time due to wear and tear and eventually these assets become obsolete. Therefore, it is necessary to spread the cost of fixed assets over a number of years during which the benefit of the assets is derived. This process of distributing the cost of a fixed asset over years is termed as depreciation. From the aforementioned definitions, it can be said that depreciation is a systematic and rational method of allocating costs to the estimated useful life of the fixed assets during which benefits are received. Factors responsible for causing depreciation are as follows. Usage of fixed assets over a passage of time leads to wear and tear or physical deterioration of the assets. Usage of certain fixed assets are prohibited by organizations when their legal rights are expired. Usage of fixed assets is restricted due to rapid changes in technology and demand by organizations. Need for charging depreciation The service potential of an asset declines with time due to which its useful life is very limited. Therefore, it is essential for an organization to determine the actual cost incurred and benefit derived from a fixed asset. As a result, depreciation accounting becomes an important concept of accounting that determines the actual benefit derived from a fixed asset over a passage of time by allocating its cost for a number of years. However, depreciation is charged against only those assets whose value declines with time and eventually they are retired. The points that refer to the need for charging depreciation are discussed as follows. Calculating net profit accurately implies that depreciation helps in calculating the profit for a year when all costs incurred are properly charged against the revenue generated by them. This would provide an accurate measure of the net profit of an organization, showing assets at its reasonable value implies that depreciation charge is carried forward for only that part of the asset which represents the expired costs of the expected future service. If the depreciation is not charged, then the asset would appear in the balance sheet at the overstated value, maintaining the original monetary investment of the asset, implies that the owner of a fixed asset is restricted from consuming his or her capital by charging depreciation on a regular basis. In other words, the owner should provide a sum equal to the original cost of an asset spread over its lifespan 
out of gross profits so that the original monetary investment of the asset should be maintained intact resulting in some incidental advantages implies that the provision of depreciation reduced the profit thereby preventing the distribution of cash resources of the organization by providing dividends to stakeholders in addition depreciation is permitted to be deducted from profits for tax purposes providing the replacement on an asset helps in the replacement of old asset by accumulating fund produced through depreciation it incorporates the advantages of depreciating the assets as well as accumulating the necessary amount for its replacement in the absence of such an arrangement it becomes difficult for the organizations to secure the necessary funds for the replacement of assets when a large amount is needed for replacement a delay in arranging money might cripple the business factors affecting the computation of depreciation the factors affecting the measurement of depreciation as shown by figure 6.2 are discussed as follows total cost of the asset includes the invoice cost cash discount and other costs which are required to bring the asset to a usable condition the other costs include items such as freight shipping charges installation cost and repair costs estimated useful economic life refers to the useful service life of the asset that can be calculated in terms of time or output or other operating measurements such as kilometers for vehicles the useful economic life of an asset is the period during which the organization expects to use the asset to earn revenue the useful life of a depreciable asset is shorter than it is physical life it is also affected by obsolescence rate of deterioration inadequacy and changing economic conditions estimated turn in residual value refers to an estimated sales value of the asset at the end of it is economic life it should be determined after deducting the disposal and removal cost and cost for getting rid of any unwanted material during the manufacturing process the residual value depends on the manner and the length of time for which the asset is used method of calculating depreciation the charge of depreciation affects the net income of an organization and is included in the income statement the amount of depreciation charge during an accounting period is based on the depreciable amount and the method of depreciation therefore the organization needs to select a proper method for calculating depreciation there are various methods of calculating the amount of depreciation it should be noted that in each method of calculating the depreciation value the accounting entries are same but the amount of depreciation varies due to difference in the calculation method let us see a video that would give you an idea of the following point depreciation there are many methods to use in depreciating assets. Generally, corporations use the straight line method for book purposes or for financial statement purposes. And we're going to be using the following uh, facts and demonstrate to you how to do straight line depreciation, then we'll do units of production, and we'll end up doing double declining balance. But here are the facts. We buy a machine. It costs us $15,000, which means that we debited machine $15,000 and we credited cash or the financing for $15,000. We now need to depreciate or use that machine over its useful life. And its life is four years. So we're going to depreciate this machine's $15,000 over four years. Does that mean we have to stop using the machine at the end of four years? No, you can still keep using it. It's okay. It's just we will not make um, the depreciation expense entry after it is fully depreciated. That's the only difference. Also notice that this machine has a residual or salvage value. 
That means at the end of four years, if we dispose of this machine, we're thinking we're going to get about $3,000 for it. So this is its value at the end of its useful life, its residual or salvage value. Now when we do straight line depreciation, it's very simply this. It's the cost minus the salvage over its life in years. So when we do straight line, or SL, it's going to be the cost, which we said was 15,000, minus the salvage or residual value, which is 3,000, over the life. We think this thing is going to live four years. So this will be 12,000 divided by four, or $3,000 a year. So what does that mean? That means at the end of each full year of ownership, I'm going to make that dead entry. Do you remember that? That's the adjusting entry where we debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. You remember that? So at the end of year one, we're going to debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation for one year's worth of depreciation which you said was $3,000. The cost minus the salvage over the useful life. That means the contra asset account accumulated depreciation now has in it a balance of $3,000 for that machine. At the end of the second year, we'll make the second dead entry for $3,000 which means accumulated depreciation on this machine now contains a balance of $6,000. $3,000 from the first year, $3,000 from the second year, total balance of six. At, in the third year, again, we make that dead entry for $3,000 as the adjusting entry. So what's in the accumulated depreciation at the end of year three? $9,000. The previous balance plus the debt entry brings us to this. In year four, the last year of its useful life that we make the depreciation entry, will debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation, again for $3,000. So what is in my accumulated depreciation account? $12,000. What did we say we would depreciate this asset to? We were going to depreciate it down to its salvage value, meaning this accumulated depreciation, if subtracted from the $15,000 cost, means that this asset is now on my books net at $3,000. The $15,000 cost in the machine less the accumulated depreciation balance of 12 gives me what we call the book value or the net book value of $3,000. The difference. Isn't that cool? Straight line depreciation, straight line method. In the straight line method, the amount of depreciation is charged every year throughout the life of the asset. This method is based on the assumption that depreciation is a function of time rather than its age. In other words, it is assumed that each accounting period derives the same benefit by using the assets over the entire life. A fixed proportion of the original cost of the long-term assets is written off each year. In such a case, the asset account is reduced to zero or a residual value at the end of its estimated economic useful life. This is done as the service potential of an asset is assumed to decline by an equal amount each period. Written down value method. In this method, depreciation is written off by applying a predetermined proportion or a fixed percentage of the book value of the asset at the beginning of every accounting period. This is done to bring down the book value of the asset to its residual value by the time the asset becomes useless for revenue earning purposes. The amount of depreciation reduces every year. In beginning years, assets life, depreciation, expenses would be higher 
and thus it would reduce the taxable income of the organization in these years. This method is also known as reducing balance method as the book value keeps on reducing by an amount equal to the annual charge of depreciation. Sum of years digits method. Let us understand this method by watching this video. In this section, we will be discussing the sum of the years digits method of depreciation. Specifically, we will discuss the following objectives. We will understand the sum of the years digits method of depreciation. We will find the depreciation fraction for the sum of the years digits method. We will use the sum of the years digits method to find the amount of depreciation for each year. And we will prepare a depreciation schedule for the sum of the years digits method. Now let's describe the sum of the years digits method and let's use it to do an exercise. The sum of the years digits method of depreciation uses a depreciation fraction and produces results between the straight line and the double declining balance method of depreciation. So let's use this method to look at this asset that costs $15,650. It has an estimated life of six years and an estimated scrap value of $2,000. We want to find the depreciation and we want to find the book value. With the sum of the years digits method, the denominator of the depreciation fraction is n times n plus 1 over 2, where n is the estimated life. So the denominator of our fraction for this particular asset will be 6 times 7 over 2, which is 21. So our first year's fraction will be 6 over 21. And that fraction will decline by 1 each year. Our first year's depreciation will be 6 over 21 multiplied times. We have to have $15,650 subtract the scrap value of $2,000. So $15,650 subtract $2,000 is $13,000. $650. So our first year's depreciation will be $3,900. And the book value will be $15,650. Subtract the depreciation $3,900. So the book value after the first year will be $11,750 look at the sum of the years digits method of depreciation. Depreciation is a very important aspect of every business, so you need to practice your methods of depreciation. In this method, the rate of depreciation is determined by a schedule of fraction where the denominator, which remains constant, is the sum of the digits representing the life of the assets taken in reverse order. Thus, if the life of an asset is three years, then the denominator, which is the same for all the years, is calculated by adding the digits from 1 to 3. 1 plus 2 plus 3. The numerator is picked up digit-wise in the reverse order. Inventory method. The inventory method of depreciation is adopted only where the asset is represented by a large quantity of small and diverse items having small unit cost. For example, hammers, mauls, sledges, screwdriver and bit and chopping tools. In such cases, it is not possible to attempt to depreciate each item separately. Therefore, the inventory method is used in which the items having almost same application are clubbed under one head and then they are depreciated. The inventory or re-evaluation system involves the following steps. Valuing the items which are in a good condition and would be useful for future at their original cost at the end of the financial year. Comparing the calculated cost with the opening balance of the account and the differences charged as depreciation. Recording the purchase of assets on the debit side of the asset account in a normal manner. Under this method, it needs to be noted that the total amount to be written off as depreciation charge is directly credited 
to the asset account and not to the accumulated depreciation account. Annuity method. The annuity method of depreciation deals with the effect of cost of capital in the calculation of depreciation. It considers that the business besides losing the original cost of the asset also loses interest on the amount used for buying the asset. The lost interest is the amount that an organization would have earned in case it is invested in some other form of investment. Therefore, the asset account is debited with interest which is ultimately credited to the profit and loss account and is credited with the amount of depreciation which remains fixed every year. The annual amount of depreciation is determined with the help of the annuity table. Depreciation Fund Method Let us watch this video for better understanding of the method. The sinking fund method is a technique for depreciating an asset and bookkeeping records while also generating money to purchase a replacement for the asset when it reaches the end of its useful life. Under the sinking fund method, the business sets aside an amount of money to invest annually so that the principal plus the interest earned in the fund will be enough to replace the asset. The amount of money that needs to be added to the asset replacement fund each year is calculated by determining how much it will cost to replace the asset, how many years the asset is expected to last and what rate of interest can be earned as well as how much can be earned through the effects of compound interest. In the depreciation fund method, a fund named depreciation fund or sinking fund is created. The amount of depreciation goes on accumulating in the fund until the asset is completely depleted. This method becomes readily available for the replacement of the asset at the end of its useful life. In depreciation fund method, the amount of depreciation of an asset remains constant throughout its life. This method enables an organization to purchase expensive assets without any difficulty in arranging cash resources. Insurance Policy Method The insurance policy method is also known as the Capital Redemption Policy Method. In this method, the organization takes a policy from an insurance company against the asset. The amount of policy is such that it is sufficient to replace the asset when it is worn out. The fund equal to the amount of depreciation is paid by means of premium every year. This fund accumulates at a certain rate of interest with the insurance company and it is paid back to the insured organization after the maturation of policy. The amount so made available by the insurance company is used for purchasing a new asset. Depletion method of depreciation of natural resources. Let us understand this method by the help of an example shown in the following video. So now we're going to talk about depletion. And depletion works a lot like units of production. Uh, so we are going to, in this case, have uh, on March 31st, 2011, the Allegheny Mining Company purchased the rights to a coal mine. Purchase price plus additional costs necessary to prepare the mine for extraction of the coal total $2 million. The company expects to extract a million tons of coal during the three year period. During 2011, 400,000 tons were extracted and sold. So we want to com calculate our deplete, uh, depletion for 2011. So our depletion for ton, per ton, so let's see here, deplete per ton okay that's going to be equal to our total cost two million of getting uh, the mine ready so that we can take the coal out divided by the amount of coal a million tons that we expect to take out so we do that calculation and that's going to be two dollars per ton. So then for 2011, 2011 depletion, depletion that, is going to just be equal to our two dollars per ton 
times the amount of tons that we took out, which is 400,000. And we have $800,000 of depletion that we are going to take in 2011. And that's all that's to that. Basically, um, depletion is part of our product cost. And it's going to be included in the cost of inventory of the coal, just kind of like depreciation of manufacturing equipment is uh, included in the inventory costs under GAAP. Uh, the depletions uh, are going to be included in cost of goods sold in the income statement when the coal is sold. So this works that way for for all. One of the one of the little differences between depletion and um, like regular uh, amortiz or de depreciation of equipment is that we generally like in this case we would go right to the asset. So we'd have debit depletion. For eight hundred thousand, and we would credit, in this case, the coal mine. Okay, so we we can use an accumulated depreciation account or accumulated depletion account, but generally it goes right to the asset. So that is a real brief um, explanation of depletion. In the depletion method, natural resources include physical assets such as mineral deposits, oil and natural gas, and timber stands. These natural resources are exhausted by exploitation. In some cases, reduction in physical deposits is offset by the growth or development of additional deposits. The cost of natural resources is the price paid for its acquisition plus the price paid for the development of such assets to bring it to a suitable state for production. The periodic depletion is not calculated in terms of year. Depletion for each unit extracted is determined as follows. Depletion per unit U is equal to acquisition cost C minus residual value S upon estimated life in terms of production units N. Machine R rate method. In the machine R rate method, the life of the machine is not estimated in years, but it is determined in hours. Proper records are maintained for the running hours of the machine and depreciation is computed according to them. Machine R rate means the cost of running a machine for an hour. This is an ideal method for calculating depreciation when a variety of expensive machines are used in productions. Summary Depreciation is defined as de-evaluation or permanent fall in the value of fixed assets arising due to passage of time, wear and tear, usage and technological progress. The charge of depreciation affects the net income of an organization and is included in the income statement. The amount of depreciation charge during an accounting period is based on the depreciable amount and the method of depreciation. The annuity method of depreciation deals with the effect of cost of capital, interest on fixed assets in the calculation of depreciation. It considers that the business, besides losing the original cost of the asset, also loses interest on the amount used for buying the asset. The inventory method of depreciation is adopted only where the asset is represented by a large quantity of small and diverse items having small unit cost.